So, hello, uh, my name is Dan, and I want to know, I want to know, are you a bit of a thrill seeker, or do you run in completely the opposite direction when you see a roller coaster? Uh, I'm kind of a bit of a thrill seeker, to be honest, unless it gets a little bit too high. I don't like high rides. Uh, well, at the minute on the phone, I have Jeremy Webb and John Wardley. Jeremy Webb is the editor-in-chief of New Scientist magazine, and John Wardley creates rides. Good morning. Good morning, Dan. How are you both? Very well, thank you. Fine, thank you. Very good. Now, first of all, John, uh, now you create rides. Uh, am I right in thinking? Have you created anything uh, of note in this country that I may be interested in? Well, have you ever been to Alton Towers? And have you ridden Nemesis or Nemesis. Air or Oblivion? Yes. Oh, yes. I've, I've been on Nemesis. I've been on Air and I've been on Oblivion. Air is my favourite, right. I'd say, out of the two. Nem- really? Out of the three, yes. Nemesis comes mm. second, Oblivion third. That's amazing. Right. Well, our new ride is going to beat those. Really? Oh, there's a new ride at uh, Alton Towers. What's, t- tell us a little bit about it. Tease me. Well, it's called The Smiler. And it opens in May, and if you think Nemesis is big, this is about twice the size of Nemesis. But the unique thing about it is, whereas roller coasters in the past have just uh, played around with your body, this marmalises you and it plays around with your mind. And there are five mind-manipulating elements that you experience on the ride. So it's it's more than just a physical roller coaster. That sounds incredible, because I was going to say, in what sense is it actually bigger? Because you often think, well, scary roller coasters are just are just huge. They're tall, they go really quickly, but Nemesis for me is one of the sort of the more intricate ones because it's like it doesn't it doesn't look huge, it's it's not massive, but it is a real head banging ride. Well, what we've managed to do is to pack more track per meter of space in this ride than any other roller coaster in the world. Um, it uh, it takes you up two different lifts. One is vertical. You've got 30 meter drops, all sorts of inversions. But on top of that, you've got special effects that actually disorientate you. So it, it's a it's a mental experience as well as a physical experience. Wow. Now I'll just come over to you, Jeremy, for a minute. Now this sort of fight or flight uh, kind of uh, feeling is I think related to roller coasters as well uh, because some people like them some people love them some people absolutely despise them what's the sort of the science behind it why do some people love roller coasters so much why do some people absolutely hate them well I, we're all individuals we all have our own pet hates and uh, and likes and I think that's what you you know that's what how that works some people are extrovert they want to try new things other people are more introverted and they don't like to try new things and i I think there's a lot of that going on uh there but 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 then psychologically if you look at people we're all made up very very differently uh, almost at a a neuroscientific level rather than a psychological level Uh, and and the way people respond to fear and excitement uh changes uh and and in this report we look at uh, the the kind of intricate um, goings on within the brain uh, of different people. So is it, there's a lot more really nowadays to the the roller coaster. It's more of an experience, let's say, rather than just a roller coaster. It's not just sitting in a car for a, a minute, a minute and thirty seconds, and going around the track. There's more to it. There's more parts of the brain that are being played with. Is that does that sound that, about that, right? Yeah, that that that's it really. Uh, I mean, what what um, uh, the the some of the people who have um, studied this uh, have found that uh, rides often work best when they are a, a narrative, when they tell a story. So mm-hmm. you, you have a build-up where you create the trepidation and the anticipation um, when you're queuing, perhaps, and when you're looking at this massive um, track that, that John's just talked about. Uh, and then you actually get onto the ride and it takes a slow ride upwards and then it drops you off the end yeah. and that's where the fear comes in so you have a few seconds of absolute agony but then you feel this great sense of excitement and achievement when you get off the other end yeah. and that's where the release is so it's, it's like tension and release it's like all good drama yeah amazing well it sounds incredible john uh, is there anywhere we can go for information on the new ride uh, at Alton yeah, Towers? yes yes if you go to the Alton Towers website, okay. uh, it gives you all the information except for one secret, which we're holding back <gasps> until you actually ride the ride. And it's a world's first. It's never been done before. Uh, and you're going to need to go to Alton Towers to find out just what that is. 
You have me intrigued. Well, thank you very much, John. And thank you very much, Jeremy. That was John and Jeremy on the Bolton FM Mid Morning Show talking about a brand new ride at Alton Towers.